Russians expand combat zone by 70 kilometers in Kharkiv Oblast. Russian troops have expanded the area of combat actions by almost 70 kilometers, thus attempting to force Ukrainian troops to deploy additional brigades from the reserve. Oleksandr Sirsky, commander-in-chief of the armed forces, said this on social media. Sirsky stressed that due to the deteriorating situation in Ukraine's east, he has been working for several days in a row in units engaged in combat operations in Kharkiv Oblast. He said that the Russians had focused their main efforts on the Strelecha Lipsy front and the capture of Vovchansk, with further access to the settlement of Bilyi Kolodyaz and the launch of an offensive to the rear of Ukrainian troops. To this end, the Russians created and significantly strengthened their operational tactical group server, which included combat units of the 6th Army and 11th and 44th Army Corps. Sirsky noted that the Russians had launched an offensive much earlier than planned when they noticed Ukrainian troops being redeployed here, but they failed to break through our defenses. Sirsky predicted heavy fighting and said the Russians were preparing for it. Under such circumstances, we must prevent further advancement of the enemy troops by steadily holding the occupied borders and positions, inflict maximum losses on them with strikes by aircraft, missile systems, artillery and tanks, and create conditions for their defeat by the actions of mobile assault groups and units with attacks to the flank and rear from different directions, Sirsky added. Sirsky stated that the Ukrainian army should make the most of its advantage in the attack UAVs, the use of electronic warfare and precise artillery fire. My work has been focused on these issues as well as on regrouping troops and simplifying the system of comprehensive support, he said. In addition, Sirsky worked in all the brigades fighting in Kharkiv Oblast, was in one of the battalions defending Vovchansk and made all the necessary decisions on the spot to ensure the sustainability and effectiveness of defense. He added that Kharkiv and Kharkiv Oblast residents are actively involved and helping the defense forces in any way they can. Russian troops are preparing to attack Ukraine from the territory of Belarus. Russia is preparing for a new transfer of troops to Belarus. Minsk is preparing to receive military trains that will supposedly soon go to the Republic from Russian territory. Ukrainian media write about this with reference to the community of railway workers of Belarus, which is recognized as an extremist organization in the Republic. Belarusian oppositionists claim that Russia is again planning to transfer military equipment and personnel to Belarusian territory. The Republic is preparing to receive the first military echelons that will come not only from the territory of old Russia but also from the occupied territories of Ukraine. Russia and Belarus do not disseminate information about the transfer of troops and equipment. Everything must happen in secrecy. In Kyiv, it is assumed that the general staff of the Russian armed forces may be preparing another offensive operation from the northern direction, the target of which will be the capital of Ukraine, although an option is also possible with the preparation of reserves on Belarusian territory. Ukrainian intelligence does not comment on the information that has appeared over the past two weeks. Kyiv has strengthened the Belarusian border significantly, building a line of of defense there and deploying a fairly powerful group. However, recently units have been periodically withdrawn from there and transferred to the front line as reserves. So anything is possible. No one expected an offensive in the Kharkov region either. Belarus has served as a springboard for Russia's war against Ukraine from the outset. Russian forces invaded Ukraine from Belarus despite prior assurances by top Belarusian officials that this would not happen and the country has continuously provided logistical supply lines and medical care for Russian soldiers. Russia has also been moving scores of weapons and other military equipment in and out of Belarus. Among the units remaining in Belarus are S-400 air defense and Iskander and top M2 missile systems as well as fighter jets and other military aircraft, including the MiG-31K, fitted with Kinzhal missiles that are capable of reaching targets 2,000 kilometers away. Russians attack like crazy in Kharkiv. Kremlin wants to create a buffer zone here. The Russian offensive in the northern Kharkiv region has created one of the most significant problems since the start of the war for Ukrainian troops, which are low on ammunition and exhausted from fighting along a vast front line. According to the Hill, although the occupiers do not have the strength to capture significant territories in the area, enemy troops advanced relatively easily and forced Ukraine to deploy reserve units. This could threaten Ukrainian positions elsewhere on the front. 
political science professor Branislav Slanchev, who studies war at the University of California, San Diego, said Russia is trying to seize territory while there is a small window to receive military aid from allies. We see the weakest Ukraine. The Russians are using this window and storming like crazy because they know that by the middle or end of summer, the situation will stabilize. The Ukrainians are in trouble now and the next few months will be very critical, the expert stressed. Russia is advancing with armored vehicles, artillery fire, glide bombs and precision guided munitions, which Ukraine finds difficult to defend against, especially with its air defense lacking. The enemy captured several villages and approached the occupation of Volchansk from where Ukraine began to evacuate thousands of civilians. According to Russian military bloggers, the invaders have already entered the northern part of Volchansk where fierce fighting continues. The Russian Ministry of Defense claims that occupation forces occupied towns near Volchansk, in particular Bugrovatka. The Kharkov offensive revealed a certain disappointment with US policy. Ukrainian officials have pushed for stronger air defenses to protect embattled regions such as Kharkiv. They also want Washington to allow the use of American weapons to strike Russia, including the Belgorod region near Kharkov, but the White House has categorically refused. Michael Bonnet from the RAND Corporation, which specializes in defense technologies, expressed concern about the number of people in the ranks of the armed forces of Ukraine. At the same time, he said that Russia's advance was explained precisely by the lack of ammunition and resources in Ukraine, which were depleted due to a month-long delay in new U.S. military assistance. Russian troops are also making gradual advances in the eastern Donetsk region after occupying Avdiivka in February, slowly advancing towards Kramatorsk and Slavyansk. In this regard, the enemy's actions in the Kharkiv region may indicate the Kremlin's strategy to create a buffer zone between Russia and Ukraine to protect Russia's border regions from attacks by Ukrainian drones. Although it is difficult to take Kharkiv, the Russian Federation can surround the city and apply enormous pressure.